Bonjour, Salam Alaikum, Shalom, Huye More, Welcome to www.hindrithejedi.com. You will believe. This is the year 2010. I can't believe we've made it there and here we are. And we plan to make this the best year of all time. Oh yeah. Welcome ladies and gentlemen, my name is Hendrin Bata, also known as The Jedi, or rather Hendry the Jedi. Actually I like to be called just the Jedi, like my friend Matipe will not be like calling me. Anyways, welcome, welcome back from the holiday guys, I hope you really enjoyed yourselves, I hope you had one of the best times of your life and really look forward to making this uh, the best year of all time, okay? And well, uh, we were all on a holiday, uh, especially as in South Africa. Uh, there was a Christmas and uh, New Year's holiday. So as you can see through the pictures there, I was just, you know, <laughs> trying to do nothing and a lot at the same time. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh -huh. And uh, I thought I thought maybe I would be, uh, it would be quiet, but somehow that's when you guys have been bombarding me with all kinds of emails, you know. <laughs> of course, it has been it has been also keeping me quite busy. I really, really wish to thank you for all your updates, for all your comments that you are saying about uh, how the site is really helping you, all the way from Venezuela to to Turkey to the to the other sides of the world, to Ma to Malaysia, to Cameroon, to Cote d'Ivoire. Thank you so much for all your comments that, are, that I'm receiving. And in fact, there is also uh, there are also plenty of emails I've been receiving from you guys of course uh, emails ranging from uh, the, a friend of mine in Venezuela who told me that uh, he managed to use the flag the realistic flag tutorial that we have here at nthejela.com he used the realistic flag tutorial to create a little promo for his father's school in Venezuela indeed I'm really proud of that email and thank you so much for letting me know my friend and there is also a friend of mine called uh, Hector Jonas from Cote d'Ivoire and Mr. Hector Jonas uh, is a I believe uh, he works in the TV industry yeah, in the TV uh, in a, at the TV studio there in uh, in Cote d'Ivoire and as you can see he managed to recreate the satellite navigation system uh, using our tutorial right here at nhjeda.com for a TV spot can you imagine we are even being used in TV promos across the beautiful African continent and of course across the world so thank you so much uh, Mr. Hector and my friend from Venezuela for letting me know about your updates and how you, uh, our tutorials and great products here at nhjeda.com are uh, helping artists all over the world to boost their creativity so thank you so much everyone for your all your updates and if you want to contact me here are or rather you can see my contact details on your screen right now as you speak and enough of uh, the holiday season and now let's get back into learning mode of course that's what we do best here and uh, as I told you guys in the email there is a little secret that I'm that I still I'm still going to tell you more about in the days to come I really don't want to spoil it because it's quite something that I never even thought would be possible uh, in this day and age okay so I won't I won't reveal my secret about it I'll just keep you uh, informed as to when uh, maybe you might be able to see what um, I'm hiding from you <laughs> anyways here is a today we're going to be taking a look at a tutorial in which we're going to create some sort of an ocean wave uh, realistic though inside of 3d max uh, for the purpose of motion graphics and we'll even take it all the way to After Effects for post-production. So here is a look at what we'll be creating today. So as you can see, basically, what we have is um, a body of water okay and we can see how the ripples take effect and of course into the beautiful distance we have uh, the fog that is occupying the horizon and of course you can see for yourself how nicely the ripples are taking place and when this idea is taken even further you can see how we can even integrate it into text elements 
so that we have our text uh, that is busy showing the waves as they pass through the text there. Just another creative idea to to play around with really. So yeah, welcome to the year 2010. Thank you for believing in us. Thank you for believing in this website, HindiTheGender.com. And yeah, let's get started. <laughs> we are first going to reset our scene by going to File, Reset. Say yes to reset. And then, very important. Now, I received a few emails with people telling me that they had a problem with uh, simulating our realistic flag tutorial. This is mainly due because of the settings that we use for 3D Max. Because, you know, we all use, I think, different kinds of measuring systems because some people live in Senegal, some people in Cameroon, some in Swaziland, or even Bangladesh or Thailand. And so, others use uh, inches to measure or centimeters or even kilometers for that matter. So I'm going to show you guys the common settings that we're all, are, we're all going to be using so that we end up with very good results. Okay, so that we don't stumble upon the same problem that some of you had simulating the flag. And of course, indeed, what a realistic flag animation this was right here at EndedJeta.com. So let's fix our problem now. So, back to our scene. As After we've measured that we reset our scene, we go to Customize, Unit Setup. Okay, click on it. And then here you're going to see the kinds of units that we're using. And as you can see, I am using generic units. Please, so please uh, change your units to generic units and change them to international. Okay? And then click on system unit setup and make sure one unit is equal to one unit in centimeters, as you can see. One unit is equal to one centimeter. Uh huh. And then hit OK. Again, we want to customize unit setup. We change the, the the display unit scale to generic units and then the lighting unit to international. Click on system unit setup, change one unit to one centimeter. Okay, and then hit OK. Mm -hmm. So now we are ready to work. We're going to create our plane that we're going to use as the ocean surface. So we go to the create panel, we're going to create a plane. And then let me show you guys a quick way of creating things. Instead of first trying to create a shape and then adjusting its values, simply click on the keyboard entry option on the plus there, okay? And then in here we're going to enter values that we want uh, to, to uh, 3D Max to, to take. So we're going to enter a length of 170 centimeters and then a width of 360 centimeters and then click create. Mm -hmm. And then just like that you will notice it, oh sorry, you'll notice that it has updated, updated our scene in the viewport. Now, we want to be able to see the edges of our surface, so we go to the perspective viewport, right click on the label and then select edge faces, so that now uh -huh, we can see all the corners and so forth. And then, in order for us to create a beautiful and smooth animation with our ocean surface, we need to give it more vertices and polygons to, to, to have, okay? So select our plane O1 object, at this point we can even rename it to C. I don't like to call it C. C is too simple. Let's call it the ocean. Yeah, ocean makes it sound big, you know? Just like just as the ocean is really big. Ocean surface. Mm -hmm. And then go to the modify panel. And then in here. Okay, let me scroll my properties here. We're going to change the length segments to 200 units or let's see, 180 units for now. Can you see how it edges, edges, edges the segments there? And then the width segments, you are going to change them to a hundred. Like that. So that now you'll notice, hmm, our scene looks quite busy indeed. We added the segments so that our C object can move properly, okay? Now, to recreate the C moving effect or animation that we want in the end, we need to animate, of course, our C surface. And what modifier are we going to use? Well, let me guess. Let, let me let you first guess what we might use. Hmm. You know what? Let me let me make your life easier. We're going to use the noise modifier. So select this ocean surface. Hmm. My max is really trying to misbehave. You can see my my modifier panels are loading upwards. We're going to load our noise modifier. Mm -hmm. Now you need to follow with me step by step as we enter the following values. Please step by step. 
we are going to do we are going to go to the noise modifiers first things first we want to change its scale to 40 sorry 41 units and make sure it's fractal okay it must be checked or else your ocean surface won't animate properly and then we are going to change the roughness of the surface to 0 0.13 okay and we'll increase the iterations to 10 mm -hmm. at this point you won't notice much difference going on wait until we come down to the strength parameters now our ocean our surface will be affected by the strength on the z-axis mainly because uh, because we want the animation to to start from somewhere there somewhere there going going towards this side okay so this is a kind of animation the direction of, of the animation that we want to end up with so to enable us to get to that level we are going to change the strength of the z-axis to 5.82 units can you see what happened to the sea surface aha you tell me uh -huh. just like that by increasing the strength of the z-axis our ocean look at that now it has some surface to work with and it's so detailed indeed if we were to preview this right now uh -huh, can you see the nice surface that we're already having great stuff already and now if we pl if we scrub through our animation let me let's turn off the edge faces for now uh -huh. you can see the detailed surface of the ocean already if we scrub through the surface you'll notice nothing is happening with our with our ocean surface it seems as if it's just standing still and now what we are going to do is first go click on the time configuration button we're going to change our end time to something higher let's say we want the animation to end at about 600 frames okay this really depends on you I prefer 600 frames to give us a long animation uh -huh. now you'll notice that the noise parameter has given us two key frames there that deal with the phase we don't need them so let's go to the beginning of our animation select the two key frames and delete the selected keys okay select our ocean surface again click on the noise modifiers gizmo uh-huh now with the gizmo selected let's come to the left viewport and then we're going to move the gizmo sorry not that way uh -uh. let's come to the top instead we're going to move the gizmo backwards on the x-axis and aha uh -huh, as you can see for ourselves by moving the gizmo's position on the x-axis we actually end up getting the ocean's movement okay so we're going to click on the stopwatch uh turn on auto key and then create a keyframe for the noise modifiers gizmo uh-huh and then we're going to of course move to the end of our animation and then around here of course we want our noise modifier to have passed okay like that so let me play it for you this is what's going to happen our ocean surface will move like that L let me turn on the edge face so that you guys can see what's actually going on okay so let's say we were to view things from here when the animation plays the noise modifier uh -huh, will begin to move its position thereby giving us actually the actual movement of an ocean surface uh, really, this is what I this is what I really like 3D Max. It gives us the ability to 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 manipulate situations to our own advantage. You know, it's really good to be animators. You know, <laughs> so just like that, what we did was we moved the noise the noise parameters gizmo from that position on the x on the x axis all the way to the other side. Okay, and of course by doing that we could easily recreate. Uh, the the appeal of an ocean uh, ripple effect now we can turn off auto key when I when I play mine back from this viewport look at that how beautifully the ocean surface is flowing okay up next to make sure that our results look beautiful if we render this now you'll notice it's a bit rough okay so to make sure that our our plane looks a bit smooth so we're going to add mesh smooth modifier to it mesh smooth uh-huh uh this might uh make it preview our scene slowly okay so that's why i recommend you uh you you only add mesh smooth towards the end okay so at this point you can see by adding sm mesh smooth it's it really makes it quite difficult for us to scrub through our animation what we can do 
is Trick 3D Max. So, right click on the Mesh Smooth modifier and then check uh, check on the Off in Viewport. Okay? So that now it won't it won't show up in the viewport. Okay, in the viewport, it's 3D Max will think there's no mesh modifier applied to it. But when we render, mesh smoothing will be applied. Okay, so again, the trick was select the mesh smooth and then check the off in viewport, and you'll notice it has gone sort of uh, blacked out there. Okay, and now, ladies and gentlemen, material and texturing the most important part in our tutorial today okay because you can have the best looking um, the best animated uh, ocean surface but if the material is not convincing enough trust me you'll have a hard time okay so here we need to pay even extra attention so we're going to rendering material editor mm -hmm. select any open slot and we're going to call it uh, hmm, um, ocean or oh, let me see Indri, sorry. Indri the Jedi Ocean. Mm -hmm. Make sure it's two sided. Okay. Very important. Now, we want our the base texture of our ocean to be a dark blue color. Okay. So, we are going to click on the diffuse uh, slot. And then we are going to change, to, we are going to adjust the, the settings as follows. For the red, we are going to enter 4. Uh -huh. For the green color, we're going to enter 9. And then for the blue, we're going to enter 13. And this gives it a very darkened uh, ocean blue color already. Okay? And then we also need to control this, the shininess of our materials. The specular level, we're going to change it to 95 units. And the glossiness will give it just 50. Okay? So that it shines nicely as the ocean surface. Let me, you can just double click on this material here to open a little bigger version of it on the side, okay, so that you can see, so that you can follow me along as we're uh, trying to recreate this uh, realistic scene of an ocean material, okay? And then we're going to scroll down to the maps, expand the maps. We're going to give it a bumpiness of 35%. Check the bump material. And then, and then hit on the none button for the bump. We are going to load a mask, okay? Not the mask from the movie, the mask from 3D Max. <laughs> so click on the mask. We are doing this because the sea, uh, the sea texture has some kind of noisiness going on, okay? For the map slots, click on the none button, and then we are going to add a noise map. You'll notice now how uh, the material is uh, sort of updated already now since this is not a sea which is standing still instead it's turbulent so come to the noise parameters and then you're going to change the noise type to turbulence again please you can see how 3d max easily updates for us what's going on in our scene there beautifully so we change the noise type to turbulence and then we're going to change the noise size to 12 units We'll change the high value to 0 0.9 and the low value to 0 0.19. Okay? Again, you can see what I told you about. The ocean surface tends to have this glittering, uh, shiny, noisy material going on. We'll change the levels to 10 and then the face to 6.3. Now, the noise also needs, needs to have a color. So, for color 1, we're going to click on the button. We're going to give a nice blue color. Now, in, in order to make sure that we both end up with the same results, you and I, we're going to change the red value to 20. Green value, leave it at 0. And then the blue value, we're going to say we change it to 173. So, that's the blue that we want. Click on close. So, those were the settings for the noise uh, parameters. So this is, these are the things that we mainly change, okay? Now, once we are done here, let's go up one slot. Where it says mask, we're going to click on the none button and load a gradient. Okay? Now, very important, we need to change the mapping of the gradient. Sorry. We need to change the coordinates from texture to 
environment and it must be screen very very important so the coordinates are environment mapping is on screen or else the material won't texture properly on your ocean surface we'll come down here to the angle and when we're going to change the w rotation angle to 90 okay now for the gradient colors we we'll come to the color one we're also going to give it a blue color so we we're going to enter for the red we're going to enter nine for the green leave it at zero and then for the blue we're going to enter 195 that's the blue that we're looking for click on close color 2 and 3 will be left as they are which is gray and white we scroll down and then we are going to change the noise size to 13.8 leave the amount as is at 0 and yeah that should do it for the gradient parameters as you can see okay by the way if I'm going to first simply pause the tutorial and enter these values as you as you see on your screen so let's go up one slot again and then up again to the main material or uh, to the main map slot okay now I'm sure as you notice an ocean surface is so detailed that it even reflects some of its own sides so we are going to load a reflection map so click on the reflection map and then click on the none button so let me expand it click on the none button and then we are going to add a fall off okay edit uh, you'll notice now the material looks as if it's the eye or the pupil of an eye we are going to change the first mat the first color the front side color from black to a, a bluish color by entering zero for the for the for the red unit and then for the green we are going to enter 28 and then for the blue color we're going to enter 37 uh -huh. some it, it's sort of a dark blue almost green color click OK we need to adjust the amount of way in which the color these colors are going to mix so we're going to change this color one we're going to change its amount to eight units and the, other, the second color which is white we're going to change it to 68 uh, for, the for the amount of time they should mix now for the first color click on the none button we are going to add a fall off like that okay sorry not fall off let me clear mine click on it we are going to add ray trace okay mm -hmm. so we added the ray trace to our material slot here let's go up one parent and then also for the white color we're also going to add of course a ray trace slot now you'll notice this the sea surface has darkened a bit go up to the parent again now very important as i said you need really to be following me closely here we need to change the fall off type to fresnel again look how it has updated there so we change it to fresnel and then we are going to scroll down until we see this curve here that's waiting for us Mo most people never access this part of 3d max that's of course especially if you're a novice to 3d max but this is really where you also control the way in which a material appears in your scene under the mix curve now in here we're going to create a point here so as you can see there click on the button there that says add point and we are going to add our point there and then select the move tool before I continue by adjusting this curve we will be able to control the way in which the material appears so watch as as we have what we are going to do now we're going to move this point here downwards uh -huh. you can see how it's updating in our material editor there it's making our material darker now up here we need a, a curve so click on the point there right click and then select bezier corner and then drag this handle outward like that as you can see uh -huh. now by dragging it forward you'll notice the outer outermost part the outer rim of our texture begins to shine out but be careful we don't need too much curviness so just a bit like that <laughs> again not too much just a bit of an adjustment okay now at this point we are ready to select our material actually let's go up to the parent 
before I, leave, I go to the parents let me remind you again what we did we changed these two colors here this one to a dark blue color and this one to we left it at white we changed this one's amount to 8 and this one's to 68 we measure both of these slots here fall off oh no, sorry our retrace materials these two slots here we change the follow-up type to Fresnel, very important. And then we modify the curve of our material by adding a point. You can see that we have an add point button there. And of course, we converted this edge here to a bezier corner so that we could push it out like that to make it a nice curve for material to shine, okay? Now at this point, let's assign it to our ocean surface. And let's try to preview this at this point. Aha, you'll notice all of a sudden the seam the scene seems to take a bit longer to render, but hey, my goodness, can you see what we're ending up with? Aha! A realistic ocean surface. Just as we wanted it. Look at that, eh? This is truly unbelievable indeed. We did this without using any textures from somewhere, okay? We didn't use to, we didn't need to download some sky textures or reflection maps or anything. We simply use 3D Max's built-in uh, materials, okay, built-in tools, and modify them to our own liking until we ended up with this beautifully looking and realistic ocean surface as we predicted. Okay, indeed, this is quite a great joy to see what's going on. Of course, by no means are we done yet. So just hang on, okay? <laughs>